Hello, today we will cover 5.3, the mean value theorems, in which we will experience a fast-paced, rollicking romp through several major results at the foundation of differential calculus. We'll start today by looking at Rolle's theorem. Now, Rolle's theorem, we will see, is the result of the extreme value theorem and the interior extremum theorem. The interior extremum theorem really only relies on the definition of the derivative and continuous functions. The extreme value theorem doesn't have anything to do with derivatives, but it has to do with a compact set. And if you have a continuous function over a compact set, then that function will attain its max and min. So you put these two together, and we get Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem directly leads to the mean value theorem, which is our star theorem of the day. The mean value theorem then has several consequences right away. If the derivative is constantly zero, then the function is a constant. If two functions have the same derivative, then those two functions must differ only by a constant. The mean value theorem also gives rise to the generalized mean value theorem, which is then used to prove L'Hopital's rule. So a lot of consequences that come right away from the mean value theorem, and none of these results have very long proofs. There's a lot of bang for our buck today. We can see a lot of results with not too much work. To begin, here's the big idea. If a function f is continuous over a closed interval, and differentiable over its interior, we will see this hypothesis a lot, then there is some c in the interior such that f prime of c is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So the, the derivative at c, the slope of that tangent line, is the same as the slope of the line connecting the two endpoints. Here's what our author says. On the surface, there does not appear to be anything especially remarkable about this observation. Its validity appears undeniable, and its proof is rather short. Although the result itself is geometrically unsurprising, the mean value theorem is the cornerstone of the proof for almost every major theorem pertaining to differentiation. Let's take a look at a few. So we begin with Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem is the starting point, and from Rolle's theorem, we will deduce the mean value theorem. So here's the picture for Rolle's theorem. Let f be a function from the closed interval a, b to the reals. Let it be continuous on the closed interval and differentiable on the interior. If f of a equals f of b, then there exists some c in the interior such that f prime of c equals 0, like in the picture. So how does the proof of this work? By the extreme value theorem, f attains a max and a min on the closed interval from a to b. So if the max and the min occur only at the endpoints, then f is constant. Let's draw this picture. So f of a has to equal f of b. They're the same height. But a is a max or min. I can't draw anything higher than f of a because either a or b is a, the max. I can't draw anything lower than it because either a or b is the min. The only possibility is that all the function values from a to b are exactly the same. Well, I have a straight line. So we can pick c to be any point in this interior. And I'm guaranteed that f prime of c equals 0. The derivative of a constant is 0. Well. What if a max or a min occurs at some point interior to the interval a, b? Well, now we can use the interior extremum theorem, and we know that f prime of c equals 0. And that is it. That is the proof of Rolle's theorem, a very short proof that is an immediate consequence of the extreme value theorem and the interior extremum theorem. But now, let's see a consequence of Rolle's theorem, that is, the mean value theorem. If f is continuous over the closed interval and differentiable over its interior, then there is some point c in the interior such that f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So the proof is not long. Note that this line has equation y equals this slope times x minus a plus f of a. This is really just the point slope formula where I'm using the point a, f of a, and I'm using the slope of the line connecting the two points. Now let me change the picture a little bit. Here's a new picture. And I'm going to create a new function, d of x, that expresses the difference in height between the original function f and this line that I have a formula for. 
and that d of x has formula f of x minus the equation I found e earlier. Well, d of x satisfies Rolle's theorem. If you think about it, you can try this at you, you can try it. Plug in a, plug in b, you'll find out that you get the same answer, zero. And d is continuous on the closed interval, d is differentiable on the interior. So by Rolle's theorem, there's some c where d prime of c equals zero. So if I take the derivative of d and I plug in c, we'll find zero equals f prime of c minus that quotient. And that's it. Now I can solve for f prime of c and I find f prime of c equals f of b minus f of a over b minus a. There's the proof of the mean value theorem. So some immediate consequences. First, if a function is constant, if f of x equals k for some constant k, then the derivative of that is zero. Do, do you believe that? You should know that already. Can you prove that using the definition of the derivative? I bet you can. If you haven't tried it, maybe take a second right now and give that a try. But what about the converse? If the derivative is zero, must f actually be a constant function? Conceivably, there's some weird kind of function out there that we've not seen before whose derivative is zero, but that function isn't a constant. Well, it turns out that can't be the case. The converse is true. Here's a corollary to the mean value theorem. If a function, a to r, is differentiable on an interval a, and if the derivative is zero for all x in that interval a, then the function equals k for some constant k. Let's see why that's so. So let x and y be an a, and suppose that x is less than y. So x, y over some interval a. Now, by the mean value theorem, we find that f prime of c is f of y minus f of x over y minus x. Okay. But we know that f prime of c is zero because by hypothesis, f prime is zero for all x in that interval. So my f prime of c is zero, which means that this fraction is zero, so the numerator must be zero. So f of x equals f of y. If I were to plot these things, they have the same height. So let k be that common value, k. Well, x and y were chosen arbitrarily. So f of x must equal k for all x. Suppose I had chosen a different y, then I'd have the same value, or a different y, the same value. So in fact, no matter which values I plug in here, they'll always have to have the same function value, and I end up with a constant function. If two functions have the same derivative, what can be said of the functions f and g? Here's the statement. If f and g are differentiable functions on an interval a and satisfy f prime of x equals g prime of x for all x in a, then f of x equals g of x plus k for some constant k. This corollary is an immediate consequence of the corollary that came before it. In fact, see if you can take a second to pause the video and prove it right now based on the previous corollary. Okay, I assume you've paused it and given it a try. Let's see how the proof looks. Proof. Let h be the function that is the difference of those two. So h prime of x equals zero for all x. Now let's apply the previous corollary to h. h of x must equal k for some k. Consequently, f of x equals g of x plus k. And that's it. Let's look at the generalized mean value theorem. This is also called Cauchy's mean value theorem or the extended mean value theorem. In a very analogous way, the same way that we were able to take Rolle's theorem and get to the mean value theorem by applying Rolle's theorem to some extra function, we get from the mean value theorem to the generalized mean value theorem by applying the mean value theorem to some simple function. We'll get to that in a second, but here's the statement of the, of the generalized mean value theorem. If f and g are continuous on the closed interval a to b and differentiable on the interior of that interval, then there is some point in the interior such that uh, this equality holds. f of b minus f of a times g prime of c equals g of b minus g of a times f prime of c. A little bit more, if g prime of x is not zero, 
then the conclusion can be restated as below. I just take both sides and divide by g prime of c. There's a nice picture that goes along with understanding what uh, this generalized mean value theorem means. Let's imagine that we're going to graph a bunch of x, y pairs. I'm going to plot g of t, f of t as t moves from a to b. So t is a parameter and I'm going to create a parameterized graph in the plane. So there's our axes and we'll start at some point g of a, f of a and a changes or rather the argument of those functions change and I end up with g of b, f of b. The right side of the equation that's really just change in y over change in x from the start point to the end point. So if I make a line connecting those two points, that line has slope f of b minus f of a over g b minus g of a. But this guy on the left side of the equation, that is the slope of a tangent line. And that is the slope of the line tangent to the curve that has line parallel to the line connecting the two endpoints. And so the generalized mean value theorem says that such a point must exist. That is the point g of c, f of c. Kind of cool. What about a proof for this theorem? It's very straightforward. Uh, let h be this function. This guy it really satisfies Rolle's hypotheses. So we can apply Rolle's theorem to this. There's some point where it equals zero. I take a derivative, I plug in c, and we get exactly the statement of the generalized mean value theorem. All right, now that we have the generalized mean value theorem, we can use this to prove L'Hopital's rule. So let's recall from the algebraic limit theorem that the limit of a quotient is the quotient of the limits, not always, but provided that each individual limit exists and the limit in the denominator is not going to zero. Well, this limit on the left might actually exist, but the limit on the denominator is going to zero. So the algebraic limit theorem is a tool. It's a tool that tells us how to calculate limits in some cases. But even though I might not be able to apply the algebraic limit theorem, this guy might still have a limit. So L'Hopital's rule gives us another tool for solving that limit. So here is L'Hopital's rule for the zero over zero case. Let f and g be continuous on an interval containing a. Suppose f and g are differentiable on the interval, except possibly at a. If f of a equals g of a equals zero, and if the derivative of g at x is not zero for all x not equal to a, then it turns out that the limit as x goes to a of the quotient of derivatives, that thing exists and equals l, that will imply that the limit of the original quotient also equals L. So L'Hopital's rule gives us a way to simplify the problem. Here's an example. Uh, compute the limit as x goes to 0 sine of, x, sine of 2x over sine of 3x. I can't apply the algebraic limit theorem because both of those things go to 0. I would just end up with 0 over 0. So I can't use that tool. But let's see that the hypotheses for L'Hopital's rule are satisfied. Um, let's see here. If I actually plug in the limit, if I plug in 0, sine of 0 equals 0. Sine of 3x, so sine of 0 in that case equals 0. So I really do have 0 over 0. Okay, that works. And my denominator function, the derivative, is not z equal to 0 for all x not equal to a. Well, the derivative of that is uh, 3 cosine, and yeah, and as I approach uh, 0, it's not going to be uh, 0. So I can apply uh, L'Hopital's rule, and what I find is that this will equal the limit as x goes to 0, take the derivative, so 2 cosine of 2x over 3 cosine of 3x, and now 
I can apply the algebraic limit theorem because these two limits individually do exist. The limit as x goes to 0 of 2 cosine 2x two over the limit as x goes to 0 of 3 cosine 3x, three uh, which is just 2 over 3. So the first equality due to L'Hopital is a simplifying move, and the second equality due to the algebraic limit theorem is our calculation. Let's take a look at a proof for L'Hopital's rule in the 0 over 0 case. I've just restated the theorem there. Let's look at the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x. And I can change this slightly by subtracting f of a and subtracting g of a. Well, that doesn't really change anything because, after all, those two guys are both equal to 0. But now I can apply the generalized mean value theorem because this quotient Think about those as functions on some interval from a to x. There has to be some c in that interval that makes the generalized mean value theorem true. And so by the generalized mean value theorem, there's some c that I can plug in where f prime of c over g prime of c equals the quotient. So I'm not doing anything with the limits right now. I'm just totally focusing on just the quotient that's on the inside. Now, I've subscripted my c with a little x, just to help us remember that c depends on x. So there's a difference between x and a, but as x moves a little bit, I might end up with a different c that makes that's guaranteed by the generalized mean value theorem. And x gets really close to a, well, there's still going to be some c, depending on x, between a and x. So this c of x is always between a and x. If x is bigger than a, well, then c of x is, is between them. And if x is less than a, it's between them as well. It doesn't really matter. But one thing we can notice is that as x approaches a, c of x necessarily also approaches a, because c of x is always between a and x. So here is the real leap of the proof. I can replace my c of x with simply x. The limit as x goes to a, f prime c of x, g prime c of x, is the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x. And that is L'Hopital's theorem. Now, one final step I could do if I really wanted to include the L, like in the theorem, is to say equals L there. But uh, that's it. That proves. L'Hopital's rule in the 0 over 0 case, making good use of the generalized mean value theorem. There's one last case of L'Hopital's rule that sometimes comes up, the infinity over infinity case. I'll not spend a lot of time on this, but take a look. The only difference is that this limit in the denominator is infinity or negative infinity. So if I take derivatives and I get a limit that exists, then the original problem also has that same limit. Just as a quick example, we might imagine the limit as x goes to pi over 2 of this uh, quotient. In the denominator, tan x goes to positive infinity. So I could take the derivative of the top and the bottom. Taking the derivative gives me an expression with a bunch of trig functions in it that all simplify to sign. So now I really can take the limit, and the answer is 1. So my original problem had a solution that was 1 as well. Okay, that's it for the mean value theorem. Here is some homework from 5.3, 2, 4a, 6a, 7, and 8. For problem 4a, you must use theorem 423, sequential criterion for functional limits. In your proof, please tell me at which point you are using that theorem. And in problem 8, think about using L'Hopital's rule to solve that. And I will leave you with a final thought. Here's a funny cartoon I saw recently. Uh, so I'm passing it along to you so that you may enjoy. All right, give those homework problems a try. Stick to it. Uh, don't give up. Fight. You can do it. And appreciate the mean value theorem, this theorem that is the foundation for so many results in differential calculus. Let me know if you have any trouble. I'll talk to you later. Bye.